Okay, we have some hazing left over from the cutting portion of the correction. We're going to take care of that with some polishing, but before we get started, in between steps, we're going to use Angel Wax Strip These, and that's going to be used for the removal of the residue of the compound. You can use that to remove old waxes, sealants, residue from polishes and compounds. I'd like to welcome everybody back. This is the fourth installment in the series. If you're just joining us, I recommend starting at the beginning, but you can hang with us here. We're getting to the polishing stage of the correction. We've done the bumper to bumper cleaning, the inside's done, under the hood's done, inside the gas cap, the trunk, wheels, wheel wells. We've done the cutting portion and uh, we're gonna dial in the paint now. We're gonna remove the scratch marks that we put in to remove the love marks and the deeper scratches with the compound and the pad we picked out. Now we're gonna put even finer scratch marks in there uh, with this right here. This is Sonax Perfect Finish. This is a very fine polish. It finishes out well. We'll team it up with this foam pad. This is one step above the white pad in this correction system. Let's pause here for a second so I can show you the close-up of a densely populated coarse cutting compound. And when we switch over to Perfect Finish, this is a more sparsely populated fine coarse polish. This will take me back to what I was saying earlier about using scratches to remove scratches. I'm trying to teach the younger guys just getting into this that when we're compounding, when we are polishing, we're actually using scratches to remove scratches. It's a little harsh to think, but that's exactly what we're doing. A compound is using finer scratches to remove the larger ones left behind by maybe washing or going through a car wash. And then we need to step down from there and go to maybe a medium cut, uh, which is uh, even, even finer scratches. And then we're going to keep going to a polish or even a jeweler. So where we get to scratches so tiny and minuscule, we can't pick them up with, the, with our eyes. And that's going to uh, give us what we think is a nice, glossy, reflective surface. Actually, if you look at it up close, it's still got scratch marks in it. But that's the way it's done. Uh, it's just the reality of it. It may not sound very sexy, but that's what we're doing here. With the perfect finish, you get no dusting whatsoever. The um, formula is user-friendly, removes just quickly, as you can see here. It's a great product to work with. Uh, it gives you great results. You can see the shine left behind. We have no more scratches, no marring, no love marks, no haze. We're good to go. And all the hazing on the rear of the car that we saw at the beginning of the vehicle completely removed. All right, another quick timeout, uh, another quick sidebar. I get in conversations with a lot of the guys just starting out, um, the importance of buying quality microfibers. Yeah, have your Costco's for door jams and engine compartments, but I want to show you the importance of having uh, a Costco towel for situations like that compared to a higher quality towel when removing uh, compounds and polishes. So this has the edge to it, and as you can see up close, this is the kind of stuff that will etch, scratch, clear coats, your A pillars, B pillars, uh, trim, and what you really want to stay away from. On a different note, as we pull the towel over and focus in on the center, you can see how the loop thread um, is tightly bound. Any kind of grit or dirt that gets in contact and gets wedged in there is closer to the surface. Let's compare that now to a higher quality towel. We can now shift our attention to uh, pricey, higher quality towel. Obviously, higher GSM, softer, plush. We have no edges to worry about whatsoever and threading. And as we focus in on the fibers in the middle of the towel, no loops, no clumping together. What it does pick up will not be held tightly against the surface of the car as you continue to wipe. So we have purposes for both towels, door, door jams, maybe, uh, interiors, uh, engine compartments, the sills, uh, wheels, wheel wells, and then we have uh, towels you definitely need to pick up for painted surfaces. Now, another thing I want to show and point out, this darker color here, are, that's a chemical that came from the factory or shipping or the bag itself, and is a reason why you should wash your towels straight out of the bag. But remember to keep everything low temperature so you're not uh, introducing too much heat, which will draw all those fibers together and will not be effective in the same way anymore. I hope that makes sense.
While we're on the subject of microfiber, um, I do want to stress the importance of having four or five of these high quality microfibers within arm's reach while removing uh, residue from polisher compounds or even waxes or sealants because as we come in closer and look at a towel that's been used to remove a wax or a sealant, these fibers get caked. Uh, barely recognizable compared to the, the pictures that we were viewing earlier. Those fibers are now clumped together and they are also collecting junk from panel and whatever has landed on it floating in the air and will be reintroduced to that surface you just spent all that time correcting and perfecting. I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, use numerous towels, high quality, and replace frequently. All right, all right, let's get back to polishing. Let's get back to the job at hand. I just wanted to stop and give you uh, as much information as it comes to mind to help you guys out, be successful, taking car, care of your own car, going out, starting a business, and starting to make money and be successful right away, not having to go through the trials and tribulations that I had to go through. Now you guys crack me up with the comments. Uh, I see words like guru and master down in the comments section. It's, it's nonsense. I have maybe a little bit more experience than you guys, but I'm going to share that with you. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. Uh, I'll share as, as much information as I can with you. If I had the time, I would pump out probably two or three videos per day. I have that much on my mind that I'd like to share with you guys uh, to help you out. But just be patient. Uh, if you're just starting out, you'll get there. You'll be uh, as good as everybody else. We're all on the same level. We just have different uh, experience uh, under our belt. That's all. So anyway, here is the first time you'll see me switch away from that polisher and the foam pad uh, to a three inch flex polisher and a microfiber polishing pad just to finish up the front bumper, rear bumper, uh, the mirrors and the hard to reach areas. And we're done with the correction portion. Okay, moving right along. We have it cut. We have it polished. We brought the clarity, the gloss, and the reflection back. No love marks, no micro marring, no scratches to get locked in underneath the coating. No etching, no stains, no dullness whatsoever. This paint is gorgeous. Uh, this gray has uh, pink, blue, purple metal flake metallic in within the uh, the base coat and looks fantastic. The cutting stage is complete. The polishing stage is complete. What's next? Well, let's prepare it for the protection, the ceramic coating. Uh, we want to use a panel prep. I'm going to use IGL pre-coat. That is a fantastic panel prep, panel prep on steroids. Um, I'm going to blow it off quick. It's been sitting now for um, a few hours since I've last touched it, so there's a lot of dust in the shop, a lot of lint. We want to blow that off first. Then we'll use the um, pre-coat, the panel prep, and we'll go from there. Now, this package, uh, it wasn't in the budget to polish the door jams or the sills or the paint under the trunk, under the hood, um, inside the list of the cap, but we will protect them all. So we're gonna to have to prep them as well. Let's get to it. I sprayed the towel down a bit beforehand. It's, it's a little damp. I'm going to cover each panel, make sure we remove any residue or uh, really anything laying down there that may get locked in underneath the coating and prevent it from bonding properly. Okay, so now we can finally get to this Jaguar sign that's behind my head here that is backwards. Well. My son already knows my OCD is off the charts because the shop is not finished since we've been moved over, working on it weekends, nighttime to try and finish it, uh, and adds to that by putting the sign backwards, thinking I'm gonna just drag out the ladder right, right away uh, without being able to control the OCD. Uh, so, you know, I left it go, trying to prove that uh, I do have it in check, yet every day it is secretly driving me crazy. So, those of you that have been asking in the comments section, you know the story behind that, and I refuse to touch it. 
Love the kid. He's also one of my best friends, but boy, are they a pain in the ass. And as I mentioned, the door jams uh, inside the gas cap, under the hood, all painted surfaces will get protected. I will not skip out the customer. Uh, for some reason, uh, I do see a lot of detailers that try to skip these areas. Uh, I don't understand it, but uh, if you're just starting out, don't do that. And this is the last little area here that we will prepare to protect because that's where we're going to start to protect, under the hood. With all of these um, pieces of plastic for plastic trim here in the engine compartment, uh, we have decided to go with Tac Moonlight. Fantastic for not only the protection of plastic trim, but it also restores it if it happens to be faded a, a little bit. It makes it deeper, darker, richer. You can go a few different ways. You could use QP on. Uh, you could use Preserve, you could uh, purchase a trim kit ceramic coating just for these areas, but we've just decided to go with TAC Moonlight and that will work fantastic under the hood for absolutely everything. So I'm going to clean it up a bit, got a little dusty during the uh, correction process, but we're going to um, get rid of that and we're going to start protection. When I protect, it's going to be from the inside out, just like when I clean. Uh, my son's taking care of that. That's clean. It's protected. Um, so I'm going to continue on from the inside out with the engine compartment. Since the heavily soiled stuff has been cleaned up earlier, I'm just going to spray some of the pre-coat into a towel and gently go over the area. Uh, we just have to pick up some fine dusting, some dusting from the compound uh, or the polish or just from sitting in the shop period. We have a bunch of projects going on so uh, there is a lot of lint and dust flying around. For those that have asked down in the comments section, it normally takes me three, sometimes four days for these. I try to do two a week. I used to do three, but I'm trying to kick back a little bit in my older age. Um, the first day is just bumper to bumper cleaning. Second part of the third day is correction, and then we have the, the coating coming up. Uh, and speaking of the coating, the protection portion of this project here is coming up, so stay tuned. I will see you in the next and probably the final segment. So this has been Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video.